Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. First, let me say real quickly, for those interested in economics, I really encourage you to listen to the last week's worth of podcasts from Peter Schiff spelled S-C-H-I-F-F. -F. It's jarring, okay? I believe it's accurate. It's really a great interpretation of the, of the economy that you might not be hearing from legacy media. Let's shift gears again briefly to the NBA, basketball. Well, the Golden State Warriors delivered I believe, as stated in the video I have up here from a few days ago, that Golden State checkmated Cleveland. They figured out the secret formula in Game 4. What's interesting is the way the Warriors are built, you'll notice that Draymond Green, the runner-up in the Defensive Player of the Year, really is a bona fide MVP candidate going forward. Right? This is a guy who stepped in the paint, and even though he's something like 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, was able to slow down Marc Gasol, right? arguably the league's best center. When Golden State had its backs against the wall in the Memphis Grizzlies series. Well, he stepped into the paint, and with Festus Azili, another defensive wizard, these guys were able to slow down Muscov yesterday, right? Let me point out that these guys are emblematic of the Warriors, right? The Warriors seem to have a lot of tweener guys who, across the board, play great defense, with the exception of perhaps David Lee, right? Who, of course, fell out of the rotation, but whose instant offense and who Steve Kerr wisely went to when he needed instant offense from a big. Well, let's just say the Warriors have outthought everyone. They were a step ahead. They understood that if they pushed the pace, then the Cavaliers were going to crack. Right? They could literally stand around and allow Moskov to get quick baskets in other games if it was going to increase the tempo. Let me say this, too. If you hit 33% of your threes, that's like shooting 50% from two-point range. Now, Steph Curry hit 38% of his threes in this series. Don't look at the shooting percentage in absolute numbers. What you want to do is you want to look at the effective field goal percentage. Right? Understand... The minute a three-point shooter is over 33%, he's balling. Steph Curry shooting many threes was at 38%. Golden State has built a team where many guys can hit threes. Andre Iguodala, Klay Thompson, right? Draymond Green. All of these guys can hit threes. Let me say, too, Sean Livingston. Another key contributor on the Warriors. Don't get fooled by who's starting and who's off the bench. Understand Sean Livingston, in my opinion, is better than J.R. Smith. Sean Livingston, in my opinion, is better than Della Vadova. Right? This is a tall guy with length who has a great handle and excellent passing skills. You add in the fact that he is an above-average defender, and then you understand that you were dealing with a team that had a fully stocked cupboard. Right? Now, even now, I question the Warriors somewhat. But once Kyrie Irving went down, and once the Warriors figured out how to up the tempo, Cleveland had no answers. And I mean no answers. Understand. The Warriors won the last three games of this series, right? Understand the Warriors beat Cleveland two games in Cleveland. Let's shift gears. 
baseball. You know, I don't talk about it much. I will in August and September. But, you know, I'm an avid better on Major League Baseball. Now, let me say this, and I don't say it lightly. I know the St. Louis Cardinals have an excellent team. I understand St. Louis is in a very winnable division, right? The NL Central. Keep in mind, of all the teams in baseball right now who are in first place, St. Louis, a team with a rich history, has the biggest lead. They're six games ahead of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Understand, too, that St. Louis has an excellent pitching staff, including some stellar young guys who look like they're going to be hallmarks for that starting rotation for several years. Right, Michael Waka is 23, nine wins, two losses. Carlos Martinez is 23, seven wins, two losses. You add in John Lackey, and you understand this team has a lot of talent at the pitching position. Understand, too, Lance Lynn, he's a guy who can make a big difference once he gets off of the DL, right? As I make this video, his ERA is just 3.07. And, of course, they have Adam Wainwright. He is on long-term disabled list. But, of course, Wainwright is a all-star. And if he comes back and if he looks like Adam Wainwright, then you're talking about truly one of the elite rotations in baseball. But in my opinion, based on the news that has broken in the last 36 hours, you need to fade the St. Louis Cardinals. Today is June 17, 2015. I've got to tell you, the reports that are coming out right now about the FBI and the Department of Justice investigating whether the Cardinals hacked into the Houston Astros database. And understand, the Astros are one of baseball's most vibrant young teams, right? They have a lot of young talent. A lot of teams would be interested in knowing how they rank their own talent, how they're doing it, right? I'm just telling you that this FBI and Justice Department investigation into the Cardinals is big. It's so big, it's one of the biggest instances, if proven, of team corruption in major sports history. Now, what's really shocking is that the allegation sounds so outrageous, right, that you would expect some cardinal big, some executive somewhere on this, you know, hallowed team to come out and say, these are ridiculous allegations. At no time has our front office asked and to my knowledge, at no time has our front office received or accepted knowingly, right, any information obtained by hacking the Houston Astro database, right? That statement shouldn't be hard to make because hacking is such an intentional act. You can't accidentally hack some other team's proprietary database. It's so intentional that it should be easy for a team to say, look, we didn't ask for that. We didn't put anyone in a position where they would think we asked for that. Let me just say, though, the Cardinals are hush. This is big. This is baseball's version, quite frankly, of Watergate. The problem is that hacking leaves fingerprints, right? We're going to find out that somebody hacked into the Houston Astro database, right? Maybe it's not the Cardinals, but the point is, you know, when you hear words like FBI, Justice Department, investigation, there's something there. There's some digital evidence someplace that some kind of hacking took place. 
And if the St. Louis Cardinals are even tangentially involved, if there's a Cardinal employee someplace who did this, right? I'm just telling you it's over for the team, right? I mean, this is, to me, possibly bigger than Deflategate in the NFL. Understand, Deflategate, allegedly, you have a quarterback pressuring equipment managers to deflate footballs, right? Because he likes the grip of a softer ball. Well, here, you might have a situation where the top of the organization, to get a competitive advantage, authorized illegal activity, right? Even by baseball standards, and let's face it, baseball is a sport where people are stealing signs, right? You know, people are trying to get advantages even by baseball standards, this is absolutely outrageous. Understand, this is a season killer. I know the players have nothing to do with this. I know when Carlos Martinez goes out to pitch, he's not, he's not thinking about hacking some other team's database. But I'm just telling you that when a media hailstorm forms around a team, when there's a tsunami and the conduct being investigated is on this level, then in my opinion, that team is finished. This is a season killer. This news is bad. Folks, the FBI and the Justice Department are not who you want to have investigate you. Right? Understand, hacking, that's not something you want to be a part of. And so, right now in Vegas, understand only the Dodgers and the Washington Nationals are getting shorter odds to win the World Series than the St. Louis Cardinals. Right? You know the way we play futures. We want to eliminate some favorite teams. So we can get great odds on the other teams. So we can focus our investment on the other teams. I'm just here to tell you that today, in June, I'm not even waiting till July. Right? I'm not even waiting for the results of the investigation. Because I already see the writing on the wall. Right? No outright denial from the Cardinals. Right? The New York Times is you know, talking to people who they claim aren't authorized to disclose the evidence, but who are telling the paper that there is some evidence, right? I already know this is going to end badly, right? The question is, just how badly will it end? So, yes, I'm crossing off the Cardinals right now. I think poor Carlos Martinez, I think Michael Waka. Whatever they do on the mound, you can imagine over time getting questions from the press about front office problems, right? Having to say, hey, I don't know about that. Hearing that the team might have gotten an unfair advantage, that the team, dare I say, might have cheated by hacking other team scouting reports. Right? This this is big, folks. Right now, there's a hush. Right now, everyone's thinking NBA Finals. I'm just telling you, if you're a baseball better, this is big. I'm fading the Cardinals starting today. I think that this Trojan horse investigation is going to bring down this proud organization. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and wirevip.com. Thanks for stopping by.